Some of you may or may not know, I've had a really unique opportunity over the past probably seven years. I've traveled literally all over the world. I've been to every chiropractic convention and event and seminar that you can imagine. And I've seen the best of what our profession has to offer. I've been doing this for about 25 years now. And I feel like I'm just starting to get the hang of it and really starting to get some uh, good understanding of what we do because things are changing, right? You heard of technology? I mean, it's growing all the time. And that's really changed what we do. I want to give you just a little bit of history. Tomorrow will be one week away from the anniversary of the birth of chiropractic in 1895. Okay, 118 years ago, a guy named Dee Dee Palmer was credited with basically founding or describing what chiropractic is. And uh, on the table there is a gentleman named Harvey Lillard. And Harvey was a janitor in the Ryan Building down in Davenport, Iowa. And Dee Dee's office was up on the fourth floor, and uh, Harvey was hard of hearing. He'd lost his hearing as a fairly young man, and Dee Dee was what they called a magnetic healer at the time. I, I'm not quite sure what that means. I really don't know exactly what he did, but he had some ideas about health and wellness and what caused illness and those types of things. And he got to talking to Harvey. Harvey could communicate because he, you know, had lost it, you know, after uh, he learned to, to speak and all that. And uh, he could not hear the clatter of the wagons on the street below. That's what they described. So maybe 80 or 90 percent loss of hearing. But anyway, he described that he was stooping over doing something and he felt something pop in his back. And Dee Dee said, tell you what, why don't you lay down on this table, let me check you out. Some of you have heard us say that probably too, right? <laughs> Lay down. Let me check you out. And so Dee Dee put him on this table, and he felt along his spine, and he felt a bump on his spine. And he described it as a bone being racked out of place. Now, we're 118 years down the road. That description is not real accurate to what really happens. But that's all we knew at the time. We didn't have the technology, we really didn't have the understanding of anatomy and physiology and neurology and all of these things. You couldn't take an x-ray because the x-ray was discovered that same year. They didn't have x-ray machines at that point in time. They just knew that they could generate x-radiation and several years down the road they discovered, oh by the way, it can kill you if you get too much of it. Some of the pioneers in, in radiology died as a result of x-ray poisoning. So we really didn't know what was going on. But anyway, he found that bone racked out of place. He put his hands on Harvey's back, and he racked the bone back into place. And guess what happened? Harvey's hearing came back. Okay. Now, if you have that experience, what are you thinking? I'm on to something here. This is good. Right? This is a really good thing. And so he began to formulate more ideas, and they began to look at more patients, and he began to look at the spine, and what they described was this bone being racked out of place. They thought it was basically putting pressure on the nerves. The nerves go from the brain to everything, and if the bone is on the nerve, the brain can't communicate to what's on the other end of that nerve. So if you rack the bone back into place and take the pressure off the nerve, health is restored. Now, again, 118 years later, that idea is fraught with problems when we understand really what's going on with neurology and anatomy and all this stuff. But they kept racking bones back into place, and guess what happened? People got better. They experienced some really amazing things. So as time went on, the definition basically got stuck, so to speak, with that old idea. And so today we have a lot of people that look at the spine and they find bones that are out of place and they push them back into place either with their hands or with an instrument and people get better. Okay, But it's way bigger than that and I want to share some of that with you. If we stuck with old technology and if we didn't move on with new understanding, we'd be driving something like that. Okay, That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Unless you're going to Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Right? That's a long drive. Yeah, you don't want to drive that to Florida, probably. Okay, that's a short haul vehicle. Okay, but that's that's where they were back then, and not very many people had these, right? They had wagons and horses. Okay, a long time before all of us had automobiles. 
So technology has changed the way we see chiropractic. Technology has changed everything. And I'm not going to read this to you, but a lot of stuff happened in the 20th century. Okay? And the first airplane in 1903 all the way to the space shuttle in 1981. That's a lot of stuff. I was talking to someone in the office today, and I showed him my phone. My phone has more computer power than the computers that sent the Apollo <coughs> rockets to the moon. <laughs> Think about that. That's amazing. In my pocket. And, and the, the wonderful invention of text messaging, right? <laughs> but the internet, and all these things that have changed over time. Okay. New technologies that allow us to see the body differently than we ever have before. So again, I reiterate Chiropractic, it's not about racking a bone back into place. And we're, we're real careful with the way that we talk about this because it's really easy to kind of get caught in that trap. When, when I travel, sometimes I'll sit next to someone on the airplane and uh, they'll make the mistake of asking me what I do for a living. And I'll give them one chance to retract the question because if they don't, I'm probably going to sit there and tell them for a couple of hours, right? Okay? And uh, a lot of people I've met before, they said, well, I'm... Oh, a chiropractor. Well, I'm glad, you know, I've never been to a chiropractor, never needed one before. Well, why is that? Well, because I've never had, what did they say? Back pain. Back pain. Right? And if you really get into it, you find, oh, well, yeah, I get back pain once a while, but it's not that bad. I just take some Tylenol or muscle relaxant, and it goes away. Okay? But back pain is the number one reason people think to go to a chiropractor. Okay? And it's way more than that. And I'm excited to share that with you tonight. So why is it a chiropractor? You already said it. Pain. Back pain is the number one reason. Neck pain and headaches, number two. Are chiropractors good at that? Yes. Yeah. Pretty good at it. Sometimes too good, I think. Because we can make the pain go away fairly quickly and we think, oh, I'm good. No more problems. And some of you, we've kind of discovered that some of these problems have been going on for a while and they've gotten kind of bad, haven't they? The body will deteriorate over time, okay? silently. We don't even know what's going on. We have to look. We have to be careful. When you come in with pain, we see your posture. We're kind of weird. We look at the body. I see people. I've got my daughter seeing these things now. She will be out there. Oh, my gosh, Dad, look at that guy. <laughs> He's all crooked or something like that, right? We see posture. And it's important to us because we understand how important it is to your overall health and the ability to function and to move. And one of the little joke sayings I have in the office is, they can't throw dirt on you if you're still moving. Right? So it's important to move, and it's really important to move well. And that's something else that we found out with some of you is that you don't move very well anymore. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But Posture is a really important thing. We look at that because it really gives us a lot of information as to how you're functioning. The big thing that we look at in our office now is patterns, postural patterns, functional patterns, neurological patterns. And we see these patterns all the time. We're getting pretty good at identifying them. And some of you have noticed that we start to talk a little bit, you describe a couple things, and then we start describing things about you that you haven't told us yet. And it's like, how'd you know that? Here's the secret. When you've seen the pattern as many times as we have, it gets kind of predictable. Okay? And so when you can identify it, now you can do something about it. How many times have you heard someone say, man, I wish I'd have known about X, Y, Z 10, 15, 20 years ago. Right? You didn't know. We don't know what we don't know, do we? Okay? So it's really important for us to be able to see these patterns and identify them because now we have some options. Now we kind of know what to do to address these patterns that have a really strong influence on your health. And it's not just about back pain. That's important, but that's a really, really small part of the benefit of chiropractic. So we talked about patterns a little bit. What causes patterns? What plays into the patterns? There's a lot of little things. The number one thing is trauma. Has anyone ever had trauma? Yeah, you were born. All right? That's your first opportunity to have trauma. And we see that with a lot of babies. Okay, the birth process is pretty tough. 60 pounds of force on the head as it comes through the birth canal. And every mother would verify. Yep, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Only 60. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of force. And sometimes the doctor has to twist the head to get the shoulder to come out. 
Okay, and so there's an opportunity for stress in the upper neck of the baby. That's our first chance. Okay, and then by the time you're three years old, you have fallen down oh about three thousand times. <laughs> That's all, right? And then we learn to run and play and jump and all that crazy stuff that it's a it's a wonder any of us make it through childhood, right? Some of the falls and trauma that we have. And then some of us, uh, we get a job and we sit at a desk and we do the same thing you know, over and over and over. That's trauma as well. It's called micro-trauma. Okay? Repetitive activities can add into that trauma. Okay. So there's a lot of opportunity for trauma. What about thoughts? Can thoughts play into all these patterns? Yeah. As part of the benefit of coming tonight, we have scheduled all of you for a dental appointment tomorrow morning. I see you guys. Right. We have some thoughts about some things, and it changes us a little bit, right? We get a little uptight. And I remember as a kid going into my algebra class, I had a teacher that wasn't really very pleasant to any of us, and I struggled with algebra at the time. And I remember getting my books, and my stomach would tighten up going into that class. Only every day, though. Right? So my thoughts contributed to some of these patterns. Okay, When someone that you see maybe at church or at the store or someone that you maybe really don't care for too much. Those thoughts changes things, doesn't it? You get all uptight, all tense, all mad again, right? So our emotions can contribute to our health overall. How about exposure to toxins? Oh my goodness, I could go on all night about toxins alone. Our air, our water, our food, the medications that are now getting into our water, okay? And it goes on and on and on. But all the allergens out there. Anyone had allergies in Southwest Virginia? Yeah, like only everybody, right? That's kind of a form of toxin. And so our physiology has to respond to all these things. And if it does it repeatedly over and over and over again, we get a pattern. I remember when I went to college in undergrad, there was, you know, that sidewalks everywhere, but there were some shortcuts across the grass, right? We don't want to walk down there do a 90 degree angle and cut across the corner. And we created a pattern in the grass because it was done over and over and over and over again. Okay? The same thing happens in your brain. Okay? It'll repeat these patterns over and over and over again. And your brain is a computer. It's just like your computer. The stupid thing does exactly what you tell it to do. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a darn thing. Does it? You, gotta, what, you know what I'm thinking about. No, it does exactly what you tell it to do. The brain is the same way. It gets stuck in these ruts and these patterns, and it reproduces the same pathway, the same results, the same physiology, the same upset stomach, the same headache every single time. So those are the patterns, and we start to identify these things. We see your posture. Do you get headaches? Oh, yeah, how'd you know? Part of the pattern. How long have you had low back pain? I never said I had low back pain. I know how long have you had it. Well, 30 years. <laughs> All right? We see these patterns, and they're ingrained. But let's say that we're walking up on the parkway or the Appalachian Trail, and we see a little rushing in the bushes. We walk up there, what was that? I don't know. Let's walk a little bit closer. Careful, because you don't know what it could be. We walk around the corner a little bit, and he sticks his head out. It's a bear. And if you see a bear in the parkway, something's going to happen. Right? Now, when the roared, did you feel your skin kind of get shivers a little bit? Tighten up a little bit? Yeah, your physiology changed, okay? And if you see a bear in the parkway, your brain is going to kick into a mode of survival. Now, take a breath. Calm down. So we can do that now because there's no bear in the room other than that image, okay? Number one, if we see one of these on the parkway, we've got major problems, okay? That's a grizzly bear. We got no grizzly bears in Virginia. Maybe it's the zoo. We see one of these that have a problem with the zoo, too. I was in Alaska recently, and they got grizzly bears up there, so we were kind of on, on the watch. Didn't see any, which is good. Okay? But if we see a bear up on the parkway, or in Alaska, or anywhere, your brain kicks into a mode called survival. It's also called fight or flight. Okay? And it's automatic. It happens every single time without fail. Okay? And there's certain things that happen when we go into fight or flight. We call them physiological responses. And the first thing that, we, that happens is your brain is electrical. It's a computer. 
and it functions at different frequencies. And the fast frequencies increase dramatically. Okay? You've heard stories of people, uh, and maybe some of you experience this too, when you have a trauma or a fall, everything goes into slow motion, right? Do so you experience that maybe? And that's because your brain is processing the information at a very rapid rate. You see everything in dramatic detail in very slow motion because you're processing so fast. Pupils dilated, I mean, you are tuned in, you notice everything around you, and you just kind of function automatically. It's, an, it's amazing. So your brain waves change, they get real fast. Your heart rate goes up. I hope I didn't cause anyone's heart rate to go up too much. Okay? But it goes up because now that pump is getting blood to where it needs to go. Your respiration rate gets rapid, so you get more oxygen into your system in case you need to run away or you're going to stay and fight the bear. Bad idea. Okay? <laughs> but sometimes we have to defend ourselves. So your heart rate goes up, your respiration rate goes up, your blood pressure goes up. Your cortisol level goes up. Cholesterol goes up. Adrenaline goes up. Your neck and shoulder muscles get tight. Okay? All of those things go up. Okay? What's cortisol do? That's a stress hormone. Okay? And one of the things that happens when we're under stress a lot is that we have a hard time losing weight. Our body hangs on to resources just in case. Okay, cortisol. Okay, some of you had to take steroids. Okay? What's the biggest complaint about taking steroids? Man, I gained all this weight. Okay? So cortisol goes up. Cholesterol goes up. Has anyone ever heard of people with high cholesterol? <laughs> I mean, my goodness, you can't watch TV for 10 minutes without seeing an ad for a drug that lowers your cholesterol. And I won't get into that right now. I've written about it. We can talk about it in the office. But if someone's under chronic stress all the time, you think maybe their cholesterol will be elevated a little bit, possibly? Here's the cool thing about it, though. It's, it goes up for a really good reason. Your brain says, you know what? We are being threatened right now, and there's a chance that we could start to bleed. You get into a tangle with a bear, you could start to bleed. And so I want to make the blood as sticky as possible. So you dump a bunch of cholesterol into it so it clots faster. Just in case. Pretty neat design, isn't it? The other thing that happens, uh, your hand and your foot temperature goes down. Your digestion shuts off. Your reproductive sh system shuts off. Your immune system shuts off because the brain is going, let's conserve as much energy as we possibly can because... We're trying to survive right now. We may encounter a fight. The hands get cold and clammy. The clamminess is so that you can grip onto the tree that you're going to climb to get away from the bear. Okay? Or to grip the weapon in the fight or whatever it is. Okay? When you come into my office, I say, it's nice to meet you, Kathy. I'm doing part of my exam right now to see if her hands are cold and clammy. And if they are, and I've had patients with really cold, clammy hands, I know that they've got a pretty serious health issue going on because their nervous system is stuck in fight or flight. They can't get out. I literally had a guy wipe his hand off before he shook my hand because his hands are soaking wet all the time. This is a very sick person, neurologically speaking. Okay, That's not normal. A warm, a warm hand is really a, a healthy thing. Okay? And it's a little warm in the room, but those of you that have a nervous system that's really out of whack, you've got cold, clammy hands. It doesn't matter what the temperature is. Okay? So that's something that we kind of keep in mind. That's normal. It's all a normal response. <laughs> Let's back up a second. Digestive problems. Is that a big issue in this country? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to ask, but think about it. How many bottles of Tums could I get out of the purses in this room tonight? Just ask and don't know. Okay? Digestive issues are huge, and it starts with reflux, a little indigestion, okay? <clears throat> and then it gets worse. Then we've got maybe some colitis or an ulcer or diverticulitis. And then maybe it's polyps, and then maybe it's something really bad. It's a progression that starts with a little indigestion once in a while. Okay? Maybe because the nervous system is basically turning that off because it's in fight or flight all the time. So what do we do to a stomach that has a little indigestion? We give it in, what do they call it? Antacid. Antacid. So that the body has less acid in the stomach, right? Well, I just told you that digestion was turned off. It's not making any acid. Does that make sense to give it something that will make less acid when there's no acid in it to begin with? 
If there's no acid in the stomach and you put food in it and you can't digest it, is that food going to do bad things and maybe give you some indigestion or some reflux? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense physiologically. Okay. <clears throat> so I don't know that that's the answer to all the digestive problems in this country. Okay. But we sell a lot of it, and it does provide some temporary relief, but it doesn't change the cause of the problem if your nervous system isn't working properly. Okay. Now I'm going to use a big word here. The, the, the nervous system is divided into a couple of divisions. And the parasympathetic nervous system reverses all these processes. The sympathetic nervous system cranks them all up, shuts everything down. So when the bear are, appears, your sympathetic nervous system goes nuts. The parasympathetic gets turned off. Well, I told you, okay, everyone take a breath and relax. We engage the parasympathetic nervous system. Has anybody ever experienced a really deep relaxation after a chiropractic adjustment, adjustment in our office? Oh, yeah. All the time, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. That's your parasympathetic nervous system saying, okay, there's no bear. Relax. Slow down. Digestion, turn back on. Immune system, turn back on. Hands warm back up. Blood supply, become normal. Turn down the adrenaline. Turn down the cortisol. Turn down the cholesterol. That's the healing process. But we have to get out of that state of over-arousal, that sympathetic state, the bear in the woods state, to get there. See, and some of you do the same thing over and over and over every day. You go to the same job, get the same stress, and you have a hard time breaking out of that because that part's not being engaged. We're not slowing your nervous system down. Okay? So that's really important that we understand that. When we slow down, when we slow down enough, we go to sleep at night, right? And that's when the body's supposed to heal itself and repair itself and grow. Have you ever heard of people with a hard time sleeping at night? Any of you have a hard time turning off your brain at night? Yeah, it happens all the time. And so what do we do? We take a sleep aid. And what do sleep aids have? Lots of side effects, okay? Actually, some of these sleep aids are like multi, multi-functioning devices because you like drive your car when you're asleep and go down to the kitchen and cook yourself something to eat or eat a pie or a half dozen hot dogs. And these are all stories I hear, okay? So there's all sorts of effects of these types of drugs. But you have to get out of that state so the body can heal and repair. Very, very important. So here's the simplified version of it. I want to keep things as simple as possible. Fight or flight, whether it's a bear, whether it's your job, whether it's your kids or your spouse, whatever it is, our nervous system responds, our physiology changes. We want to get to the point where we can adapt, slow things down, let the body heal, let it become adaptable. I want it to do certain things when the bear shows up, but I want it to be able to get out of that state and heal and repair and grow. Very important. That's what we do. So it's this adaptation process that a lot of us struggle with. We're not able to get out of that state for long enough periods of time. We go right back into the old state. Some of you have been under chiropractic care for many, many years on a maintenance basis. On a, I'll call you when I need you, Doc. When do you need me? When you're in pain, right? And we help you get out of pain, and it's like, I'll see you when I need you. And we're in pain again maybe a few weeks, months, years later. Okay. And we're really not improving our ability to adapt to stress. Stress will never go away. Really, the definition of stress is anything that changes your physiology. When the bear roared and your physiology changed for a moment, okay, that was stress. Then you calm back down. That's normal. That's neurological adaptability, and that's really the key. Your ability to adapt to your environment. You go into fight or flight, but get back out. And if you're having a hard time with that, we can help you. So here's, here's the easiest analogy I can think of. Does everyone know what that is? A gas pedal and a brake pedal. Which one's the gas? Stress. The one on the right. That's really important if you're driving. Okay? Stress is the gas pedal. It revs things up. It makes the nervous system operate really, really fast. And that's really good and really important sometimes. <clears throat> but we have to be able to put the brake on. We've got to be able to slow things down. And some of you got a great gas pedal and no brakes. Okay. 
Some of you are walking around, driving around with your foot on the gas pedal and the brake. <laughs> and the brake is sometimes in the form of a drug. So your nervous system is wah, screaming down the road and you've got your other foot on the brake. And that will work for a while. But something bad is going to happen eventually. The car is going to break down, isn't it? Okay. Your health is going to break down if we operate like that. So adaptability, you all probably need more brake. I don't know that there's anyone in this room that needs more gas pedal. Okay. It's 2013, <laughs> almost 2014. We got enough gas pedal going on for everybody right now. So our inability to adapt neurologically results in symptoms. I have a headache, I got a back pain, I got pain down my leg, I've got plantar fasciitis, I've got an elbow problem, I got a wrist problem, whatever it is, we see it all. Okay. That's the symptom. Pain, dysfunction. Eventually, if it gets bad enough, you can get what they call a diagnosis, right? Which is really nothing more than a fancy Greek name for what your symptom is. Oh, well, you've got cervical radiculopathy. <laughs> what a ridiculous word, right? It just means that you got a nerve from your neck that's all flared up and causing all sorts of problems, pain, no distinctly. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a symptom. If that goes on long enough, you can end up with the disease. And what do we do with disease? You treat it with drugs, some surgery. And sometimes that's a really good thing. Okay? I'm glad we have all this great technology in the world of medicine. I just don't want to participate myself personally, right? So it's it's good at times. But if you had the option to avoid all that, you know, and, and this is America, everyone gets to vote. Okay? If that's what you want to do, you might need some help staying on that path. All right? So how do you know if you're stuck in a pattern? You all know? Some of you have some ideas, don't you? You got a, a clue, maybe, or a hint that you are. <clears throat> what I'm going to show you next, I think, is probably one of the most powerful slides I've ever seen, one of the most powerful documents I've ever used in practice, and it helps me understand where you're at. And so I want you to kind of self-evaluate yourself right now, okay? And if you have a balanced, healthy nervous system, you can check off all these things. High energy, few symptoms, resistant to infections, positive mental attitude, mentally alert, excellent health, active, and vibrant. That's a nervous system that gets into fight or flight, survival mode, but then gets back out regularly, okay? A high level of neurological adaptability. Now, if you have an unbalanced nervous system, that's where we start to see symptoms. And I'm not gonna read all of these off because you all can read. Okay, but I think it's interesting to see that an under-aroused nervous system is things like poor attention, easily distracted, depressed, not motivated, can't concentrate, constipated, worry a lot, you're irritable, low energy. That's an under-aroused nervous system. Okay? An over-aroused nervous system, cold hands, cold feet, tight muscles, there's a bear in the room! Over-aroused. Poor expression of emotions, a racing mind, I can't sleep at night, high blood pressure, what do you do for high blood pressure? Take a pill, but it doesn't change your nervous system. Okay. And then you can kind of be in between, kind of flip-flopping back and forth, an unstable nervous system. That's the, that's the wild, crazy stuff we can't really put our finger on sometimes because you're all over the place. Migraines, headaches, seizures, sleepwalking, sensitivities, bedwetting, eating disorders, bipolar disorders. The brain just can't settle down. And so these are symptoms that are associated with an imbalanced nervous system. If that goes on long enough, you end up with an exhausted nervous system. That's the bad stuff, the really bad stuff. <coughs> Cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, MS, depression, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, ALS, Epstein-Barr syndrome. That's the really bad stuff. And that stuff happens over the course of time. And a nervous system that doesn't adapt anymore, it gets stuck. It's like the foot on the brake in the gas pedal. Something's going to burn up eventually. Okay? If your immune system is constantly turned off, you can't recognize viruses, bacteria, and funguses, and things like that. And so that gets a, a foothold and it starts to attack. <laughs> If your immune system gets tired enough, eventually it doesn't recognize what's normal, what's healthy, and it starts attacking you. Those are autoimmune diseases. Okay? The point I'm trying to make is that all these symptoms, all these conditions, all of these things are associated with the nervous system because that's the system that controls all function. 
Chiropractors affect the nervous system. We don't just unwrap a bone, okay? We change the state of the nervous system. <coughs> Dr. Pat would only give me two hours tonight to talk. <laughs> about 30 minutes, I'm about done, okay? But I'd, like, I'd love to get into more of what's going on in the world of neuroscience because what it shows is that when we deliver a chiropractic adjustment to you, we change the brain. We've hooked people up to the EEG, the electroencephalograph, and we can see that it changes brain waves when we deliver an adjustment. It changes the brain. It changes the nervous system and the adaptability of the nervous system. That's why chiropractic is so powerful. Okay? It's not our sense of humor. <laughs> or our personalities. It's not it. It's the power of the nervous system adapting and slowing down. So this is really important. Does this, has anyone ever seen anything like this? This is pretty, pretty cool stuff. This comes from the world of psychology. Siegfried Othmer is his name. He's written books. They've been doing neurofeedback and biofeedback and EEG studies on people for 40 years. They got it figured out. And so now we get to take this technology, this improvement in what is going on, what we know about now, into our field so we can help more people with their problems. So what do we do at Kennedy Chiropractic? We really focus on, number one, identifying what's causing the problem, what's contributing to the problem. Because there's a lot of ingredients in the cake, aren't there? Okay. There could be a lot of things contributing to your problem. It could be an old trauma. It could be a new job. It could be financial stress. It could be a lot of different things contributing to your stress, to how you handle stress, to your ability to adapt to stress. Okay? So once we identify those things through our posture exams, our foot scans, our x-ray exams, our orthopedic or logic exams, our brainwave study exams when we do those, okay? then we basically, now we know your pattern. So now we have to interrupt the pattern because the brain is hardwired now. Ever heard of someone that uh, had a stroke and they had an arm or leg paralyzed and over time they regained function in that arm or leg? It's because they created a new pattern in their brain around the area that was damaged. Okay. So the brain can change. It's called neuroplasticity. It's pretty neat stuff. So we help you implement then a new pattern. Those of you that are patients, we have you doing these horrible exercises, right? <coughs> to create a new pattern. Some of you don't do it very well when we start. You struggle. Wow, this is hard. Yeah, because your brain hasn't figured out the new pathway yet. We have to create that. And it's a lot of hard work. And I commend all of you that are patients in our office that do the hard work. But when you do the hard work, you get a good result. And this is why. Because you're interrupting the old pattern and you're implementing a new pattern. Okay, So identify, interrupt, and implement. Simple things. Like I said, I've been all over the place. I've seen the best that the profession has to offer. I've seen the worst that the profession has to offer. Okay. Dr. Kennedy, Pat, and Mia have been in practice for a long time. So have I. Dr. Josh is fairly new. He's coming in with all the new technology, all the new information on neuroscience. That's what they're teaching in school now. When I was in school, the height of technology was my four-color big pen. Hello. <laughs> I didn't have computers. They didn't have computers. We didn't have 3D imaging and all this cool stuff to learn the circle of Willis. I had my four color big pen, and by golly, I drew that bad boy out dozens and dozens of times to learn all seven arteries and where they went. Okay, So we've got some really neat tools in our office now. For those of you that got really severe spinal conditions, degeneration, disc problems, arthritis, we have a procedure called long axis spinal decompression. Powerful, powerful tool. Not everyone has that. But that helps us interrupt the pattern, stop that degenerative process. If we don't stop it, guess what? It's going to keep going. Because that's the only thing that the brain knows. That's the brain's best way to adapt to the trauma and to the stress that you've encountered. Okay? So really an important tool for some of us. We use orthotics to stabilize your feet, knees, hips, pelvis, and the rest of your spine. Some of you have feet that are in balance. If we don't address the feet, we have no chance of creating balance the rest of the way up and breaking the old pattern and creating a new one. It's a really important part of what we do. Okay? And a lot of you are enjoying the, the benefit of those things. 
We do many different types of chiropractic adjustments based on what you need, based on the different skills that the doctors have. Okay? We use a lot of instrument adjusting. We're not really racking bones back into place. We're changing your adaptability. It's very gentle. It's very comfortable. Those of you that have received those adjustments, they don't hurt. Okay? We adjust babies. We adjust people well into their 90s. Okay? So it's gentle because we're changing the adaptability of the nervous system. We use some really high-tech stuff called audio-visual entrainment to help you create better neurological patterns in your brain. We can literally slow your brain down and engage some of those slow patterns that are not engaged when you see the bear. And so we've got really neat technologies to help you create better patterns. Digital posture evaluations, something that is relatively new in our practice, but it gives us a really simple, non-invasive way to get a snapshot of where you are in your posture right now, we can follow up and reevaluate you down the road. We do that. We're going to take x-rays. We're going to take another posture exam of you and make sure that we're moving in the right direction. Okay? This is a long journey. Okay? It's always a good thing when you start a long trip to make sure that you've been on the road for a little while, you're on the right road. All right? We've all heard stories of someone ending up in the wrong state. They missed an exit. Oh, my gosh. I've got a friend that saw a welcome to Missouri sign. Wrong state. <laughs> Six hours out of the way. Okay. So we reevaluate you to make sure we're on the right road. Uh, a new technology. It's a week old in our office. It's decades old in, in the world of technology. Cold laser. Low level laser therapy. Some of you in the office have had just a little taste of it maybe. Very, very powerful technique for pain reduction, for speeding the healing process, reducing muscle tension and trigger points. Again, non-invasive, very, very safe, real effective. I'm excited about this technology. Okay? It's just another great tool to have. If your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Right? That's true. If your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So we have lots of tools in our toolbox. Uh, laser, we do a lot of rehab. There's Tracy. Helping us with rehab, okay? And I know you whine and you moan and complain sometimes because it's hard, but the benefit is unbelievable, okay? It's immeasurable in financial work for creating a healthy, balanced nervous system. So it's a really important part of what we do. Obviously, a really high-tech digital x-ray. Uh, again, a great tool for our office. We're unique in the quality of tools that we have to work with. I have to applaud Dr. Pat and Mia for having the foresight of investing in those types of tools. So that, that's for your benefit. So our goal, number one, is to relieve pain. And that happens pretty quick. Smaller box. That's the foundation of our pyramid here. If you're in pain, we want to help you get out of pain as quick as we can. That's really important. Number two, break old patterns. Number three, at the tip of the uh, pyramid there, is to increase your ability to adapt. Okay. I want you to understand that as you go forward, the reason you go to the chiropractor is to increase your ability to adapt. That's really the most important thing you can do, is that ability. When you lose that ability to adapt, you'll lose your health. But you won't know it, maybe for years and years and years. But that's really the key. That's the pinnacle of health, is the ability to adapt. The results, many of you are our examples. Pain relief, better balance, better immune and digestive systems, reproductive systems work. Okay? Uh, we're slowing down degeneration a lot of people, reducing the risk of fall and injuries of many different types. Increased ability to handle life, anxiety. Anxiety is one of the things that responds really well to a balanced, adaptable nervous system. And we see that over and over and over again. That's a huge issue in our society. It's out of control. People just can't get a grip. It's their brain. It's their nervous system. Okay? We can help with that. Do you know anyone that's looking for answers about their health? We, we don't claim to have all the answers. Okay? We don't know everything. Okay? But we're going to look. And if there's anything that we can see that's contributing to the things that we can affect, we'll tell them that. And then they get to choose, do I want to go down this path of improving my neurological ability to adapt? Okay. Along the way, feel better, be out of pain, move better, okay. and 
function at, at a much higher level, a much higher quality of life. Okay? If you know anybody that's looking, we'd love to help them. I think uh, Dr. Pat's going to follow up with the, uh, a couple of uh, announcements, uh, some opportunities uh, for people that might want to come in and get checked out to see if there's anything we can do to help you with your ability to adapt. And uh, we'll be around as long as you want to hang out with any answer questions. But I think I'm about done. And I just want to say thank you for coming tonight. It's been a great evening. I appreciate it. Thank you.